Okay, this lecture is a basic lecture about, uh, and there'll be a little video component, but mostly a lecture here and some pictures. Uh, this is for recording voice. And this is whether whether you're recording someone singing in a studio or speaking as yourself, um, whether you're using a microphone, preamp, you know, computer or whatever, or you're using a little digital recorder or even your phone. This will translate to all of those. I'm uh, going to start out with a little bit of uh, a little history, but this history is important because many people think that you need to record digitally hot, kind of high in the red. And I see a lot of things recorded at a higher level, and that's just not the case. It was, however, in the day of analog recording. So uh, any non-digital medium, uh, any non-digital uh, storage medium, there was a need to record at a higher level for a few different reasons. Uh, two primarily. The first reason being is that the analog recording media was always a battle between the audio signal that was being recorded and the inherent noise of that medium. Whether you were recording on a magnetic tape, uh, direct to disc, wire recording, if you didn't know, there used to be a little recorder that was fairly low quality, but it was recorded on a magnetic wire, a steel wire. Anyway, uh, you would take your microphone, plug it into a cable, plug the cable into a preamp or a mixer. So in the middle there, there are several gain stages. And what I mean by a gain stage is that uh, from to get a microphone signal to be usable by a, an analog mixer, there needs to be uh, one or two, depending on the type of microphone, pieces of gear between. So you need a preamp, which is fairly common. Uh, what that does is it takes the small amount of electricity, the audio signal that a microphone emits, it goes through the cable and into the preamp, and the preamp boosts that, boosts that to a level that could be used by the audio mixer. And so that's what a gain stage is. In addition, there might be some outboard gear like a, a tube analog compressor or even a tube solid state compressor. Uh, so each of these elements in the chain adds a little bit of noise in addition to the base noise floor of the medium. So if, you're, if your tape medium floor, if the, if the machine wasn't adjusted well, possibly, or you're using tape that had been used a bunch and you add a tube compressor, maybe a tube mic preamp, and all that on there, that adds a lot of hiss. So like that sort of that you hear on old tape, like if you listen to a cassette tape, maybe. Uh, so classically what happened was is that uh, the technique was to record at a higher level, sometimes even hitting a peak of maybe plus 18. If you're looking at a meter, that would be known as being in the red or overloaded. The reason was if you get more of the audio level to be printed onto the tape or whatever, that would mask the inherent noise floor of that medium. So if your noise floor was down here, say a negative uh, 25, negative 30, which is fairly high, and you're recording at plus 18, your signal is going to be uh, mask out that inherent noise. So vocals would routinely go in the red. Um, there's also something in recording to tape called tape compression. So when you get something with a fast transient, the transient being the sort of micro second of hot level, like with a snare drum, the initial impact would cause a transient. With a kick drum, the initial impact would cause a transient. Same thing with a piano. When you push the piano key down, the uh, percussive note, that would cause a transient. So the hot transient, so if a transient was recorded and it, it spikes the meters, uh, it does induce what's called tape compression. So rather than the just big fat distortion, there's a little bit more of a an evening out of the signal. That's still probably going to have a little distortion back into it, but with something like a snare or a kick drum, that might be something that you would want to have. So anyway, that's that's kind of a long discussion about it, but that is a reason, one of the reasons why people think you need to record really hot is to uh, cover up the noise. Secondly, 
And this kind of goes for things like tube preamps, tube compressors, uh, tape tube preamps or whatnot. When the signal, when the audio signal hits those peak levels, that added voltage of the signal would cause a little distortion to the signal. And analog distortion on some things in varying sound levels is a good thing. Uh, think about dis distorted guitars. I mean, we wouldn't even have an entire genre of music uh, if if people didn't, you know, exploit distortion on guitars to for a good effect. Uh, same thing with harmonicas. A lot of harmonica music is, has distortion on the uh, on the harmonica notes. Uh, some keyboards like clavichords, electric pianos, they have, you know, uh, they are distorted at times. Um, and a lot of the classic rock and roll recordings had distorted vocals too. I'm going to play a little section from a song by Little Richard called Rip It Up. And uh, the little bit of dirt noise on the signal makes the performance sound a little bit more exciting. Uh, check it out. Chad go down by the Union Hall When the dirt start jumping I have a ball, I'm gonna rock it up I'm gonna rip it up I'm gonna shake it up Gonna ball it up I'm gonna rock it up And ball tonight Okay, we're gonna fast forward now to digital recording. Recording analog sounds and turning them into ones and zeros digitally to store them in digital files. That's what's going on, right? So the thing with digital recording is there is no inherent noise in the medium. So all of these ones and zeros and everything, the only noise that is being introduced to them is what comes from your microphone preamp or your microphone or your cabling or something such as that. It is not in the computer. Uh, so the only thing you have to be concerned about is noise in your gear you know, preamp mic cable, modern gear is generally very quiet. So when you're recording your vocals, you don't have to put the signal into the red to get a quality recording. In fact, older uh, dB VU meters, volume units meters, uh, they measure dB in volume units. And what is shown as zero dB VU is really equal to negative 18 dBFS, which stands for dB full scale. And that's how digital audio is metered, the full scale. You want to see everything. And the reason why is the zero on a dBFS meter is the very top. That's in the red, and it equals distortion. But it's not the pleasing, warm, fuzzy analog distortion. Digital distortion is very hard and cold. It's unforgiving, uh, It's and it sounds bad. It just doesn't sound good at all. So... When you're recording vocals with a digital recorder, now that being a DAW, a digital audio workstation on your computer, with your phone, uh, your notebook, or a digital recorder like the Zoom F1, something like that, you want to aim for your vocals to be anywhere from around negative 24 dB with the peaks to hit negative 6 dB at the very most. Then... Uh, you would use your digital audio workstation, whatever it is, whether you're using Audacity, Audition, Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper, um, you know, Ableton, whatever it is. Uh, that is when you would use what's called a brick wall limiter. Brick wall limiter prevents signal from going above a certain point. Uh, the brick wall limiter in Audition under the effects uh, menu is called a hard limiter. And that cuts your peaks, and you want to cut your peaks down for WUSM material to negative 10 dB. Uh, I use negative 10 dB across the board. That gives me plenty of headroom if it goes a little above. Um, and uh, the reason why I use that is that uh, there is a protocol called WaveGain that is pretty much universally used with digital audio and streaming and different things like that. Wave gain cuts the signal down to basically 90 dB, which is in the neighborhood of negative 10 dBFS, something like that. Um, there's some more technical things, but they really won't matter to you, and they'll probably bore you if I try to explain it. Uh, so I'm just going to just say we're going to we I use negative 10 dB for everything on WUSM. Now, when you are using a hard limiter. Uh, with your with your wraps or when you're with your audio, you don't want to boost the signal, so you need to look at all the settings on it. So the 
level, the peaks, the top needs to be set at negative 10 dB. You don't need to boost. Now, it, you can use maybe some makeup game, maybe, or look ahead or whatever, but those are really kind of irrelevant for what, what I'm doing. Now, for more finer audio adjustments, they may have a different uh, effect on different things. But for vocals, and this is what I'm talking about, is the audio, they're not going to have enough of effect to matter. Now, I am going to go a little further and say that in a music recording studio, most engineers are going to shoot for negative 12 dB as a top. So don't let that confuse you when you are recording or if you're recording with someone else and say, well, you know, Wilbur set it to do this way. Well, I'm just saying negative 10 for WUSM for my purposes and for my audio network at the station and for the audio chain from the console to the station. Uh, uh, station transfer, the digital transfer out to the tower, and even the signal going into the final limiter and the transmitter, negative 10 is where I sit all across the board. Other people may have a different opinion. There's no one that's right or wrong, but uh, that's that. Hopefully that makes sense and whatnot when you're recording where you can uh, take a look at it. All right. Thanks. Let me know, you know, send me an email if it doesn't make sense and I can try to make some sense out of it for you.